corny according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary reads, mockishly or tastelessly old fashioned, tiresomely simple and sentimental. Okay, friends, hold on to that definition I just shared and the words in it, you're gonna need it later. What's up and welcome back everyone, it's your girl Drika Will. I am an artist and creative in the CHH space, navigating faith, life, and music, and I hope that this channel can add value to your life. I would love to start off with a beginning disclaimer. This is not me critiquing specific people, but specific and frequent actions that I've seen take place in the space that I'm in. The goal isn't to take away from anyone's skill or abilities, but to rather add value and insight. And also I'm critiquing what myself and others have seen in the space at large. I'm just bringing together all of the components that I could think of or find that make us come off as corny. Um, and I brought in more research for this video and less emotion and bias to really back up the argument behind why CHH is corny in hopes that we could actually change and grow from it. That's all not to, you know, tear anyone down or degrade the ministry of Christian hip hop as a whole. If our God is the originator and creator of all, the best artist and creative out there, and he's uniquely and wonderfully made us, why do we feel compelled to copy? Inspiration is one thing, but to outright copy and replicate? Why is that? How can we be substitutes if our God is the original? He created this world and everything in it with love. He created us from a place of love. He painted the blue skies and thoughtfully added clouds. He painted the grass green. He's constructed every fiber of our very being down to the small details of who we are. We were carefully and skillfully crafted by the greatest creator of all. He's given us an array of things to be inspired by, but we've settled for imitation and in some cases, <laughs> plagiarism. <laughs> <clears throat> now we know that to be holy is to be set apart, but how can we be set apart if we're all the same? Interestingly enough, we've watered down terms like holiness, God, Bible, Jesus, and so many other terms in this space to fit trends because it's catchy. It feels like we're grabbing all of the Christian buzzwords and slapping them onto our content, all in the name of being a Christian artist. We've extracted the weight from these terms to add as accessories for our songs and brands far apart from their true and core meaning. And don't get me wrong, some people do it well with how they structure their rhetoric. Some folks actually make it make sense and I think it's pretty dope. But a lot of folks seem to just follow this hypothetical Christian artist blueprint and then everything sounds the same and then when everything sounds the same it just sounds like a bunch of noise and then that when that happens we become desensitized and we lose connection with the artist and what they're actually trying to convey through their art. In a 2017 article written by the Acrolynx team they state that according to the Merriam-Webster's dictionary buzzwords by definition are Important sounding, usually technical words or phrases often of little meaning used chiefly to impress laymen. In the same article, a section titled To Buzzword or Not to Buzzword, they ask several great questions to consider when writing, but I'll only read a few. Does the buzzword add little or serve to only illustrate lazy writing? Am I only using the word to show off or try to sound like one of the cool kids? Am I 100% confident that I know exactly what this buzzword means? Using a buzzword incorrectly is a definite no-no. It'll make your content and by extension your company appear out of touch and your credibility will suffer. In this case, instead of your company, your artistry. Another more recent article written in 2021 by Notes Office Furniture discusses why using buzzwords are bad for your business. Tech-based buzzwords will always be risky because the farther they move from the original meaning, the less descriptive they become. Effective communication is always about the clarity of the message and never the jargon, which it generally just blurs the meaning. They also share that vernacular becomes outdated as quickly as the technological applications that coined them, as well as dropping an outdated phrase to appear exceptionally intelligent or hip, usually just to make you seem tragically otherwise. Now, hold on. Did they just use the word outdated two times? Stay with me. Over here, we believe that the Bible is relevant, okay? And we're not talking about that anyway. Remember earlier when I told you to hold on to the definition of corny? And I want to show you how the likeness of two terms link being corny and outdated together. Okay. Okay. Now that we're in uniform, 
I will now insert exhibit A. I call this Drika Will's Corny Theory One. I know that's a bad name, but yeah, anyway. On this slide, you see the B representing the buzzwords and this little rapper dude representing Christian hip hop and R&B artists, cause they do it too. All right, on to the next slide. We see that the words old fashioned and outdated are synonymous. And remember how a way to describe being corny is tastelessly old fashioned. So we're gonna link that together as well. Remember the word outdated being linked to buzzwords? Okay. And here you will find us using buzzwords like OD on the word use. Okay, do y'all see the visual connection now of how this links to being corny? The overuse of these buzzwords, these Christian buzzwords in our records? Your Honor, at the conclusion of my case, the defendant here, CHH artist, is found guilty. I rest my case. When your presence as an artist is built around buzzwords or trends, imagine what that does to your brand. Another topic for another time though. And honestly, y'all, this can all be applied to any music, any genre. Yes, I know this can be applied to the world, but we're talking about us, the Christian hip hop artists, the believers, the ones who are supposed to be set apart, who are supposed to be different and killing this thing. Y'all, I actually have another formula slash theory that comes to mind when I see the music that's created in the CHH space at large. All right, hear me out. So you have your Christian buzzword, plus your non-explicit but degrading lyric that somehow alludes to some sort of upper hand, plus how God made them superior, plus the Bible being some sort of accessory anywhere in our body but in our hearts, times Jesus or God, plus more Christian buzzwords, plus maybe fighting or killing a demon in there somewhere. And then you're gonna pull your calculator out, put all your calculations in, and bam, you have your typical Christian hip hop or Christian R&B record for 2022. Y'all, I promise I'm not aiming this at anybody in specific. I've just placed myself in settings to be exposed to a lot of Christian hip hop music and artistry, that's all. I got quite a bit of pushback on TikTok saying you're listening to the wrong artist. And they started tagging all these artists and I get their heart, but I'm also present in a space where I watch people's live songs get critiqued and I hear and see this. I go to events, I go to conferences, I go to shows, I have Christian peers in the space. We see all of these things, you guys. We have these discussions behind the scenes. It's not like the space is completely like void of the things that I'm saying. Like it's not me just making up something, making up a conversation to start. Like who's really about to sit here and spend an hour filming a YouTube video and then spend another two, three hours editing a YouTube video and then struggling to upload it onto the computer with the sound and the audio and everything that comes with uploading a YouTube video just to be sitting up here making up lies. I ain't that bored. I digress. But yes, I also see this stuff on my social media. Like, it's out there, you guys. If it's not coming across your timeline, your page, great. Keep sharing their music, keep supporting them, keep uplifting them, keep encouraging them, keep telling them to do what they're doing. So the only thing I will say to that is, if it don't apply, let it fly. And if you have nothing to add to the conversation, just sit back and watch. Let me ask you guys a question. If a tree falls in a forest and nobody's around to hear it, did the tree really fall? Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not happening. All in all, I care about the growth of this community as a whole. And I care about our potential impact that we can make as a whole. And I will say, I also know several artists who aren't using these formulas and these cliches and these buzzwords, or they're not like overly using them and overly doing it in their, in their artistry and they're crushing it. But I'm challenging us where we can do better. So let's do better. I wonder if we don't believe what we have on our own is eye catching enough. So maybe that's why we do what's trending. Maybe that's why we do what quickly comes and goes away. Hey. And I get it, some of us are here for the moment. Some of us are just here for a good time and not a long time. I get that, I understand that. But just in case you happen to be somebody who wants to be here for a long time, or you know somebody who wants to be here for a long time, and they're, you know, you know, doing some of this stuff, you know, help them out. But yeah, y'all, honestly, we could tap into clout and it, we might even be getting a bag for the season while we're doing it. But if all of this fades away and it, turns out to be a facade. Does any of this really matter? <sighs> but on to my next point. If someone is operating at the maximum capacity of themselves and they're being the best version of themselves, you can't replicate that. You'll just have this counterfeit version of the original. And I don't know if you know anything about counterfeits, but the quality on counterfeits are 
you can't be the best version of them because you're not them, you're you. You can only be the best version of yourself. But some of us aren't even being ourselves. So how can you be the best? How can you be the GOAT? What are you the best at? Self-deception? Plagiarism. A Wikipedia article on music plagiarism reads, Music plagiarism is the use or close imitation of another author's music while representing it as one's own original work. Plagiarism in music now occurs in two contexts, with a musical idea that is a melody or a motif, or sampling, taking a portion of one sound, recording and reusing it in a different song. And did y'all know you could self-plagiarize? I surely did not. But I'll leave the research on that one to you since it's, you know, a personal thing, you know, self-plagiarism, self, you. <laughs> and speaking of self, you literally can't have any competition if you're not doing what someone else is doing. You're immediately immune to competing with other people and you opt out of the comparison game because you don't compare to anyone else. The only thing you're comparing yourself against is the last thing you did or a different version of yourself. So that means the only person you have to worry about outdoing is yourself. And inspiration is such a beautiful thing. If you have an artist or inspirational figure in your life and you listen to their music or you observe their work and you just have this transcendent experience with what you listen to or what you looked at, what you read, whatever it is, and you go, man, and you decide that you want to do that or you want to create a, a feeling similar to that or you want to create some sort of emotion or it inspires you to want to try and see like, okay, what can I create? Or how, how do I tug on the heartstrings? Or how do I connect, you know, with my, my audience, with the person who is consuming my art? Well, that's great because now you're educating yourself on the components that come together to make this beautiful thing that inspired you. And I also want to make it clear that I'm not just alluding to heavy, sappy emotions like grief, sadness, depression, frustration, anger, all that. Not just alluding to that. But I would even say that this could apply to happy, jovial, confident, empowering, feel-good music. But again, to just copy and paste what someone else did, which was their experience from their emotions, and put it onto you who didn't have that experience or develop those emotions and then put it into art, you're not going to have anything close to the original, especially not the experience of it. It's going to be a diluted substitution. Like for me, I get extremely agitated when vegans, they'll have their like meat substitution and they'll be like, oh, this is vegan chicken. And then I'm looking like, that's not chicken. That's like heavily seasoned cauliflower and mushrooms. Like, to be honest, if they was to like, just have like some sort of fancy name for their cauliflower or mushrooms that are like heavily seasoned with all these like different flavors to give it a chicken flavor, then I'd be more inclined to try it. I'd be more willing to give it a taste, give it a try. But as a person who loves chicken, I don't want no substitute chicken. So if I bite into this chicken and it's not the identical texture of real chicken, it's on site. It's on site. Because you told me that this was chicken. This is not chicken. This is a substitute. But y'all see the parallel? And shout out to the vegans, plant-based food slaps. Like I know some really bomb plant-based food. I'm not anti-plant-based food or vegans, you know. Just stop lying and telling us that these cauliflower, cauliflower buffalo chicken wings or chicken wings, they're buffalo cauliflower or another perspective remember when you were a child and your teacher gave you the paper with the dotted lines on it to trace and learn how to write and then when you trace the letter a it was like yay you traced the letter a but you didn't write the letter a you just traced the letter a but baby when you wrote the letter a by yourself you were something different okay you was different talk to me nice I wrote the letter A by myself. I didn't need to trace the dotted lines. Unfortunately, I see a lot of artists in the CHH space and the R&B space as well, tracing the letter A when we can be writing novels in cursive, my love. I hope y'all are following me. And no, I'm not trying to take away from anyone's art or take away from anyone's creativity. I'm trying to add value. At the end of the day, make what you make. But longevity and sustainability will come to collect their dues at some point. And I just hope that you got something to give back to them. But hey, that even depends on if you're trying to play the longevity game or, again, you're, if you're just here for a quick moment or not. It's all about your goals at the end of the day, right? And that's cool, I guess, too. And to the consumers who are making comments like, oh, well, sometimes I just have my favorite secular artist and I still want to listen to their music, so I need a Christian substitute. And I need it to sound exactly the same because that was my favorite artist. 
because I was getting them comments too. I mean, I guess, but I feel like at that point, my love, you might as well just go put on your favorite mainstream artist and just call it a day. <laughs> like, go ahead and just type in the clean version of whatever that song is. If they got it on the internet, you might as well just put it on and listen to it. Because let me tell you this, your fave is most likely listening to the explicit version of your real fave's music to get the version of music that they are making. And then they're replicating it in the name of Jesus with a pile of Christian buzzwords. So if it don't apply, let it fly. And just in case you didn't like the fact that I cited Wikipedia earlier, here's another article where it talks about how you can be proven guilty for copyright infringement. And we're gonna focus on the section of the article that talks about substantial similarity as it pertains to this video. A BuzzFeed article authored by Reggie Ugru says, it's important to remember that copyright doesn't protect ideas, but rather creative expressions of ideas. Copyright is designed to prevent people from copying a creative work or specific elements thereof without permission. And he goes on further to say, substantial similarity is a question of whether or not the average listener can tell that one song has been copied from the other. This is the ordinary observer test, what Fackler calls the hallmark of copyright infringement. The more elements two works have in common, the more likely they are to be ruled substantially similar. Proving substantial similarity in music cases is complicated by the fact that all songs carry two kinds of copyright for composition and sound recording that have to be evaluated independently. And just to add some garnish, on his website, lawyer and drummer Kurt Dow says, as the old saying goes, there is no such thing as an original thought. Everyone from Shakespeare to the Beatles to Zeppelin has been accused of stealing ideas from those that came from before them. We are all influenced by the world around us and songwriters are no exception. But where is the line drawn between influenced by something and plagiarizing it? He goes on to say that, the law states that anything that reflects a minimal spark of creativity and originality can be copyrightable, including melody, chord progression, rhythm, and lyrics. Is your music even copyrightable? Y'all, artists are out here getting sued for plagiarism, okay? So you better stop bigging your fave up. I'm talking about some, you need a Christian substitute just because you want them to sound exactly like the mainstream version. And the way y'all faves be letting us know that they're mimicking mainstream artists, I'm talking beyond covers. I'm talking about like songs uploaded on all the platforms. I'm talking about entire records and discographies where people can be like, oh, this is a so-and-so song. This sounds exactly like so-and-so. Or they'll title that they are the replacement for that said artist. Remember y'all, minimal spark, minimal spark. Minimal, minimal is not a lot. Minimal is not a lot, okay? And the way folks be trying to go viral at an instant, <laughs> y'all gonna end up giving the wrong artist proof that you were copying off of them. God forbid that record pops off. If the right, or in this case, wrong case blows up and your fave is found guilty, they can't use you needing a substitution for your convictional needs as a defending artifact. And also as an artist personally, I don't wanna hear that I'm the replacement for someone else or the clean version of somebody else. I don't like that. Like I have my own thing going on over here and me being a substitute takes away from that, so. But because art and conviction are two subjective phenomena and they're so complex, I don't really wanna go into that on this video. I'd rather hold off on jumping down that rabbit hole, so. And I would love to end with a closing disclaimer. This is not me saying that people shouldn't do covers, remixes, samples, interpolations, or anything of the sort. I love me a good remix and a good cover from time to time. And I'm definitely not telling anyone that they shouldn't be an artist either. I'm just challenging us to try originality. I'm actually not telling anybody what they should or shouldn't do, period. I just believe that we forfeit originality and we limit our creativity when we copy or plagiarize. or plagiarize. I've seen conversations that CHH is dead, but I honestly have hope and I believe that we could be doing it big over here. And I believe that we are as alive as we possibly can be, as the people who are in this space are alive, you know? I believe that there are, you know, there's gonna be a shift and a change eventually. But you know, right now we're just having, you know, as they say with R&B, R&B isn't dead. It's having an identity crisis. CHH isn't dead. We're just having an identity crisis and we're gonna get it together. The girls are gonna be gathered. Anyhow, y'all, I probably should have pushed them more in the last video, but please go and check out my music. I'm gonna leave the links to check out my music. I have some music videos on my YouTube channel as well. Go ahead and check those out. There's a playlist for that. So you can just find all of them in one section. Other than that, I hope that this video finds you well. This is your girl, Drika Will. And don't forget that Drika can, Drika Will. And yes, you can. Yes, you will. I will catch y'all at the next one.